If you've been searching for flight tickets recently, you've probably been shocked by the prices you're seeing. Despite your efforts to be flexible on travel dates and destinations, now that restrictions have eased, you just can't seem to find that good deal you've gotten used to seeing. This is because the cost of passenger air travel in South Africa has increased by almost 50% over the last 12 months. The question we're asking tonight is why are flights so expensive at the moment? To help us answer that is Guy Leach, editor of SA Flyer. Guy, always great to speak to you. Uh, so we know there are multiple factors at play here. Uh, there's the increasing fuel costs, there's the liquidation of Com Air, but 50%? Is that really justifiable? Hi, yeah, nice to be with you. Well, actually, it's more than 50%. In fact, most people will recall paying as little as 700 rand for a flight between Johannesburg and Cape Town. And now a recent look at uh, just today at, at, at air ticket prices shows them around about the 2,400 mark. So you could say a, as much as a 400% increase. Is it justifiable? Yes. The Competition Commission has been making noises to say, oh, they're going to investigate this. But there's very little chance because... Actually, the airline ticket prices is, is, is very much of a cut price war. Um, and they're always competing on price because there's nothing else to compete on, really. So there have been, as you pointed out, a number of really strong drivers. Perhaps the most significant right now has been the massive increase in the price of fuel, with the heavy fuel prices having increased from around $40 a barrel to $120 a barrel. That puts enormous pressure on prices. But on top of that, of course, there's the lack of supply of seats with the loss of the 40% of Comair's um, available seat capacity. And then, of course, there's also the third compounding factor, which is the, um, the enormous losses that the airlines have been carrying because of the COVID lockdown. So they're trying to recoup some of those losses. So um, there's been massive upward pressure on prices, and I honestly don't see any end of it because there will be this uh, shortage of supply at least until the end of the year. And then, of course, I'll be into the usual Christmas rush. So I'm afraid I'm not seeing any decrease in prices coming before 2023. Hmm. Guy, uh so this supply and demand, we're all very much familiar with it. It's, it's how um, the economy works. Unfortunately, this dynamic seat pricing that airliners, uh, air, airlines are allowed to uh, apply, if you, if you compare that, let's say, use something that everyday pe people need everyday, bread. If you would use the same model and say, well, everyone needs bread, so I'm going to charge 50 rand for a loaf, it would, just, it would not be accepted. So why are airlines allowed to say that because there is now higher demand uh, and, and reduced supply, we can increase the prices without regulation? I, I love the way that they used to say they're allowed to, to, to do that. Well, that's the nature of the animal. The nature of the, you know, we do live in a liberalized aviation environment with a free market. And that means that, it means that airlines have been able to price tickets, as you rightly call it, on the dynamic pricing model, which means that you could end up paying three times as much as the person sitting next to you for the, exactly the same seat. And obviously that causes a lot of resentment if you paid a lot. But then the other benefit, of course, is that others get to pay a little, uh, much less. But it's the same process, if you like, as green grocers. You know, they will get a whole bunch of tomatoes which are about to go off or exceed their sell by date. They're going to mark them down at a really low price because there's nothing more perishable than a hotel bed or an airline seat. So the airlines really don't want to sell um, to fly airline seats. They'd rather sell them mm. even for 100 rand, which would be 100 rand they wouldn't have. And that's why we've had such an efficient airline industry in South Africa. It's been absolutely great for the tourism, tourism industry compared to, say, for instance, Ethiopian Airlines, which have had a much more protected environment. That's why they've done so well. But it's come at the expense of a massive loss of income, of revenue, of growth prospects for the Ethiopian economy. That's, it's the dilemma we face. Either you have a dynamic pricing model, as we have in this country, with really absolutely cut price tickets, or you have a protected price where it's like a bus ticket or a train ticket, and everyone just plays the same price. Personally, I think we would actually all prefer to have the dynamic uh, pricing model. Guy, so you're saying that you're not uh, uh, seeing any kind of reduction in costs uh, before the end of the year. Does that apply to tickets uh, bought far in advance as well? Is there still, are there still good deals to be found if you buy a couple of months in advance? 
Well, that's the nature of the dynamic pricing model. It always pays to buy your tickets as early as possible because the airlines love to you know, have as many tickets sold as possible, by and large. Of course, that's what one of the reasons that Comair got killed, though, because they had sold tickets uh, six months or even a year in advance. And uh, now uh, they were confronted with a prices or a cost of flying that was uh, literally through the roof, thanks to the increase in fuel prices. So they were losing money on every seat. But by and large, for the consumer, it's always good practice to try and buy a ticket as far in advance as you can, because that will certainly give you a better price than waiting for the last minute when the airlines are often able to sort of push up their prices. Hmm. And Guy, what are the numbers saying about whether South Africans are actually still buying these exorbitantly priced tickets? That's an extremely good question because everyone's talking about the loss of the 40% uh, capacity or seat availability that Comair provided. But that's not strictly going to be the case because as ticket prices have gone up, so uh, increasing numbers of people are simply going to choose not to fly. This is what we call the VFR travel segment, which stands for visiting friends and relatives. These are people who might have you know, elected to go and visit, let's say, Granny for her birthday, but now with the very high ticket prices will no longer. So the demand is obviously going to come down as well. Um, so, And at the same time, we're seeing a great response from airlines like Safair, which are rapidly acquiring new aircraft. They've got five new aircraft going to be delivered in the next... Uh, six months or so, five still this year. So that's going to help enormously in terms of, of reducing the um, lack of supply, particularly as we go into the Christmas period. Um, so, you know, I'm ho obviously hoping that the situation will achieve a new normal before the end of the year, but we need to bear in mind that South Africans love to travel over the Christmas holiday period. And, of course, it does uh, provide opportunities, like you say, for uh, fleet increases for other uh, carriers. Uh, Lyft also saying they're likely to increase their fleet two or three times uh, before the end of the year. Thank you so much for your insights. Always great to chat to you. Uh, that's SA Flyer editor Guy Leach giving us some insights into the cost of airline tickets at the moment. Still to come on South Africa tonight, there's been another snag in the payment of social grants. We'll bring you the details shortly.